In this video, we're going to talk about scatter plots. However, we're going to talk about them at a pretty high level. I want to introduce the topic, but we're going to go into depth in much more detail in a later chapter. So at this point, I want to make sure that you understand really what a scatter plot is, how to create it, and in general, what it's going to show you. So it's a very useful graph and chart that's used for bivariate data. Bivariate data, meaning that we have two data points that are associated with each other. In this data set, I have information on the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit versus ice cream sales. So as you would expect, as it gets hotter outside, ice cream sales also go up. So we would assume that there's a relationship between those two. And this is where the scatter plot is very useful because we want to have that information that's associated with each other. So for example, on a day that it was 58 degrees out, for that specific day, there was $215 in ice cream sales. And on a day that it was 60 degrees out, there was $332 in ice cream sales. So again, this is paired data and it must be paired data because when we graph it, we're going to use one part of that data for our x-axis and the other one we're going to plot for our y-axis. So it must be associated data. For the scatter plot, I'm going to select cells A5 through B17. And then I'm going to select insert and I can select either my scatter plot or my recommended chart, which is going to go ahead and pull up my scatter plot. So I will select OK. Now it is going to go ahead and pull in the information from my Y axis as my title. I'm going to want to change that so it's a little bit more descriptive. So in this case, it will be ice cream sales based on temperature. And I could change that to, to be something else more descriptive as well, but that will give me information on the information for my x-axis and my y-axis. So I will also want to add my chart elements so I know exactly what information is being presented on my x-axis and my y-axis. So I'll start with adding an axis title for my primary horizontal. And this will be temperature. And then I'll put that in Fahrenheit. So I also know what scale, what unit it is in. And then I will add an axis title for my primary vertical. And I want that to be my ice cream sales in dollars. So with my scatter plot, I'm looking at the relationship between temperature and sales. So I can see that there is a strong relationship between those two. As temperature increases, my ice cream sales go up. What I can also do is select my data points and then I can add in a chart element either by adding in a trend line this way. I would want to add in a tre uh, linear trend line or I'll back out of that for a second. I could click on those again and I could right click with my mouse and I could format the data series by adding a trend line. And then I get quite a few options to my right. I would want a linear trend line. And I can also add the equation and the R squared, which shows the relationship between those. So I'll close that out so we can see it a little bit better. So typically, you'll, you're probably going to want to select this and move it. Oftentimes, it becomes hard to read because it might overlap your line. And this is the information we'll get into in more detail later in the semester. However, our equation here is our equation for our line. 
so we could predict information based on that relationship. And our R squared value is showing us the strength of the relationship. So in this case, we have a very strong relationship between those. The other thing I, would, I want to mention on the scatter plot as well, it's important to make sure that our axes are clearly labeled, our title is representative, but also that our scale is representative. In this case, our sales start at zero and go up to $700. Oftentimes, charts and graphs can be misleading because the scales are changed. And when we do this, it really affects how people are going to interpret the information. So having that zero point for our axis where it makes sense is very important. To show you something you would not want to do, I'm going to select that axis and I'm going to change my minimum value. So here I start at zero and I go up to 700. For the sake of the example, I'm going to change this to 150. Now if you look at the steepness of the slope, the relationship of the data, once I select enter here and it changes my axis, then it becomes, it looks steeper than it was before. It changes that relationship. So if I'm not careful with what I do with my axes, it really impacts how people are going to interpret that information. Oftentimes you'll see this when it comes to dollar amounts and the magnitude will look very different, particularly with bar charts, because they won't have the zero value and it, it throws off the ratio of how people perceive that information. So I'm going to change that back to zero as it should be so that people are interpreting that information more appropriately. So as we create our charts and our graphs, we really have to be careful and, and pay attention to how our audience will interpret that information.